Welcome to the tutorial of tutorials, the one that will put the biggest smile on your face for understanding how whole number exponents work. In order to start this, you need your dialogue, you need your language, if you know what I mean. So when let's set the stage, you're sitting in math class and you're asked, what is 4 to the power of 3? Well, a couple of things need to come into your mind. First is this picture, 4 to the power of 3. Okay, well, what does that mean? What are they? What is 4 and what is 3? They have special names. That 3 is superscript, which means it's a mini 3 written just above the big 4. That 3 is known as an exponent or a factor. The big 4 is known as a base. Now, I have cleverly color-coordinated all bases and exponents the same color in this tutorial. You're welcome. I care for you. Now together, the base and the exponent make a power. So what does this actually mean? What are you supposed to do? How do you figure this out? Well, first we got to understand that this is a specific form of writing. And this exponent thing really means repeated multiplication. So here's 4 to the power of 3 again. That's our power. But this is written in a specific form called the exponential form. It's exponential because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, it has an exponent. And that means repeated multiplication. So how, what, what does repeated multiplication mean? It means this. Now commit this to memory. Write the base that many times and multiply them. Write the base that many times. How many times? That many times. Right there. So write the base that many times. So, okay, so here's the base, 4 in blue, so I guess I write it 3 times? Yup. 4 times 4 times 4. That means write the base that many times. Uno, dos, threeos. Punch that into your calculator, 64. Now, you could put this into your calculator and save yourself a whole bunch of work, or you could do it in your head and be the fastest. Or you can go 4 times 4 times 4. It's whatever you really think is best for you. But there will be moments where you need a scientific calculator and you're going to be looking for the button to actually put an exponent in. And so it actually has different buttons for different calculators. Here's just a picture of some of the ones I found. You might have a button that says x to the y or y to the x, a to the y or a to the x. You might have this little house, this little roof, saying that, hey, guess what? We're going to write a base and then this button, superscript, I'm going to write an exponent. So if this right here, y to the x, is your button, how would you type 4 to the power of 3 in your calculator? Well, it would be like this. 4, beep, this button, boop, exponent 3, beep, equals 64. Easy. So your calculator may be different, but you got to learn how it's done. So everything is really easy and straightforward. Now, but I'm sorry to tell you, negative integers come into play. Yep, I said it, the I word, integers. What if you have a negative value base? Can you still put an exponent on it? Well, yes, you can, and I know that you just got shivers, or maybe you, you totally love integers. They're a part of life, right? I'm negatively excited about this, but it's all good. The problem is with negative valued bases is that we have brackets around it sometimes and sometimes we don't. And it will give you two different answers. So for example, you're looking at this exponential form, here's in brackets meaning that the base is negative two. See how it's still in blue there? The base is negative two. And then you write the base that many times, negative two times negative two and so on and you get 16. And you can put that in your calculator, negative two, button 4 equals 16. But the thing is, sometimes you have this negative and there's no bracket around the, that, that sign. Well, this purple negative right here is called a coefficient. And it's essentially the same thing as multiplying whatever answer you get by negative 1. So you'd write the base 2 four times, then multiply them, and multiply it by negative 1. So if you are confused, this is what it looks like. Here's the coefficient negative 1 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is negative 16. We have two different numbers. 
But even at this, here's all these negatives. Now I'm all confused, Mr. Levitt. What the heck? Well, there is a rule. So check this out. You just need to make sure... Ooh, ding-a-ling-a, ding-dong. You just need to make sure that you have this coefficient in the brackets um, when, it, when it needs to be. If it's not in brackets, then you're not going to take this base or with the negative. It's just this base. Does that make sense? Here, look at this. Here's the rule. When you have a negative base, so here in both of these examples, I have a negative base, negative 5, and they're in brackets, so that is the base, negative 5. When you have a negative base, if the exponent, if, if you have an even exponent, then the answer will be positive. Okay, so I'm going to punch that into my calculator. Beep, boop, beep, boop, 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 boop. Yeah, it's totally positive. So negative 5 to the power of 2 is, and it's an even number, and so because you already know that a negative times a negative makes it positive. See how it turned red there because it's positive and color coordinated? I know you loved it. You secretly did. Same thing down here. Here is the base that is a negative exponent, or sorry, not a, a negative base, and we have an odd numbered exponent. So this will be a negative. Go ahead and punch it into your calculator. Prove me right. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Oh, negative 125, totally righteous. Negative. You may not be. So, you just need to keep things, you know, in track. Or on the track. Well, if it's an indoor track, then I guess you have to be in the track. But here's these two examples. Here I have a base that is not negative, but there is a coefficient. So we write 5 two times and then multiply it by negative 1. See? Here's the work. Negative 1 times 5 times 5. Boom. Boom. Negative 1 times 25, negative 25. That's what the coefficient does to our otherwise positive uh, answer or power. Down here, here's the work. We have negative 1 coefficient that's beside a negative base. And because if, if this negative coefficient wasn't here, right, here we'd have a negative base to the power of 3. That's an odd. So we'll do 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125, and it would be negative because... 2, a negative times a negative is a positive, times another negative, it's a negative. Have I been saying positive and negative? Hence, the shivers down your back for integers. Negative integers. Just be careful, right? I go back to this, right? Exponential form is quite easy, so keep it easy. Write the base, whatever it is, positive or negative, by that many times, by that exponent, and you'll be fine. Learn how to use your calculator, and you're rocking and rolling. Now go be powerful or something. Good luck.